Welcome back to another edition of Benton Fry Fishing. Uh, I'm back on a river today, the Brazos River, for people who are familiar with Texas. Uh, this river, as you can see, is super dirty. Uh, it is January 12th, it's my first time fishing this year, which is super weird for me, but here we go. Uh, today, I'm gonna kind of explain how to navigate the shallower, slow-moving rivers, um, things you can do without a depth finder. I don't have mine today. I mapped this whole stretch of river a couple times, or last time I was out here, so I feel very confident without it. But simple things you can do from your kayak to navigate this river so you don't beat yourself. Uh, my pedals go down about a foot and a half, so I gotta stay clear of water shallower than that. Also, it is January, so it's technically winter. I'm in a t-shirt, so thank you Texas for being super nice. Uh, definitely put sunscreen on today because very pale. But uh, um, since it is winter, we're gonna go target some deeper spots, probably catch a bunch of catfish today. If we're lucky, maybe pick up a gar or two. But either way, way to get meat for the freezer and a great way to get some action here in the dead of winter. So stay tuned to see where you can go, where you can't go, and how to catch the fish. All right, first type of river section that we're approaching. As you can see, there's a steep bank to my right in this big shallow sandbar to my left. So come look at this river. Um, what the, sh the shoreline tells you a lot about what is going on in the river. I've got some trees in the water in front of me, can't see them. But like you'll see the shoreline is very steep. So that means that section over there is gonna be a lot deeper than the section over here to my left. So I'm gonna favor the right side. I have a bunch of debris in front of me. So what I like to do, instead of saying, oh, a bunch of calm water up here at Slack, I'm never gonna make it through there because it's gonna be about four inches deep. I'm gonna kind of try to bob and weave through these trees that are sunk here. This is where the deepest water is gonna be. Um, for sure have polarized glasses on, you can see where you're going, but all I gotta do is dodge and weave in between them. And once you get through, keep hugging this right side by the deeper water and you should be able to get through it just fine. All right, we get to the point now where the river bank's still pretty high here, pretty shallow there, but the river itself turns and makes hooks to the left there. So when you get sudden turns in a river, the water's gonna follow the path of least resistance. So you can kind of see way up at the end there that it's really, um, the right side of the river flattens out like the side over here. So what we're gonna try to do is there's a little debris in the water here, there's water in here. So there's gonna be like a gap where the channel is right in front of me. I'm gonna take that gap in the channel and draw a line to the bank on the left where the deep spot or the steep side of the bank is. We're just gonna go straight down that line Obviously, I may have to adjust as I go if, say, I look in the water and there's a tree branch right there and I know it's a little bit shallower, but I actually see the bottom. But for the most part, when the river like makes a turn, just make a direct line from where the channel was, where your original path was, to where the channel is going to be on the other bank. Let's go straight down that line. You should be able to get through. Oh, all right, we're starting to get close to our spot here. Uh, we can see that there's a little bit of a rock formation mostly just sediment clay so there on the side this cliff right here is very steep compared to everything else that we've been looking at and this is kind of what i'm looking for this time of year usually when i'm chasing catfish i look for channels in like eight to ten feet of water maybe some brush in the shoreline just kind of anything that keeps fish swimming through and anything that potentially has cover for bait however this time of year since it is the dead of winter the water is somewhat cold say it's like 50 degrees all these fish that were hiding by logs and other shallow stuff throughout the year dump into these deep water spots. The spot I'm sitting in right now is about 18 feet. This is the bottom end of the hole. The hole is created from a 90 degree turn that's up ahead. We'll be fishing up in that 90 degree turn, so I'll show you a little closer later. But when I get to this deep hole, the first thing I do um, when I have a depth finder is I just paddle around it and see where the fish are. Um, right now, there's a few fish scattered all throughout this bank right here, just kind of randomly spread out, but there isn't one good concentration. So in a few, when I get up there a little bit, I kind of show you where those fish are going to concentrate. They're not in this deep 25 foot trench that's here. They're going to be in an area that's a little bit shallower off that trench. All right, we are up in the spot where I'm going to fish. So that's up current up there, uh, basically where this lip ends around that corner. The water is only like three feet deep and it just drops off in this flat over here right here where it gets about 15 feet we got some scattered trees other deep things over here i'm going to specifically target this hole it's right here you can barely see it but the water's eddying right, eddying right here 
a little bit shallower and the water's moving really slow. So these cold lethargic fish are just gonna hang out in that really slack, shallow water. I have this tree right behind me here. Um, if I look down on my graph, there's a bunch of bait and there's a few fish here. Um, likely it's crappies and other predatory fish feeding on those bait fish. There's a bunch of gar in here too. So they're gonna hold tight on this structure that's in this deep hole. I'm obviously not gonna target that because I can't really, I don't really wanna get snagged all that much. So I'm gonna go over that slack water where it's wide open, don't have to worry about snags over there. And again, we got this deep trough all the way down that has the potential to hold fish, but just not the best concentration that I'm looking for. I'm looking for that eddy where there's the highest percentage chance of getting bites. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull my kayak over there and start fishing. All right, got my classic bottom rig, got a night crawler, a little float on it, one ounce sinker. First cast, let it rip. Now we wait. And we're hooked up. Feeling a lot like a catfish. Lo and behold, it's a catfish. It's a little blue cat. Barking, barking. And we're hooked up again. Putting bait back on the other rod, just caught a fish. Got a little guy on. That's why I'm using my crappie rod. First channel catfish of the day, nice. Nice little channel cat. Oh, buddy. And we're hooked up again. Sorry, I was distracted on the cell phone, checking out Snapchat. Uh, as you can see, I've caught a couple fish here so far. Um, I got out at like one and it's three o'clock now. The fish really didn't start biting until now, um, catfish most active after dark so you think later in the evening sunsets around five this time of year last couple hours of light usually much better than during the middle of the day but yeah just as predicted sitting in this eddy down here in the corner in the deep hole i'm halfway through catching a little catfish see my little blue Got him. So when catfish feed, instead of a, like a, say like a bass that just goes and swallows the minnow and doesn't think anything about it, catfish are actually tasting it before they even get it in their mouth. Uh, they have taste buds all over their skin. But also when they find it on the bottom, they'll pick it up maybe once or twice to really taste it. And eventually they'll finally eat it. So when I'm looking for a bite, I'm waiting for my rod tip to kind of just like bend all the way over before I set the hook. That way you know it's actually in their mouth. Got a cute little blue cat here. Kind of hoping to get a couple. Ones are like two or three pounds, but uh, throwing out a bunch of macroverts, macro inverts. Bye buddy. Hey, we're hooked up. Maybe asking yourself, 
why do I still hook so damn hard? My only good answer is there's a lot of stretch in monofilament line, and why not? Whew, little blue guy. And that'll do it for this video. Um, I may have catch the fish after this closing, but so yeah, early January, um, winter fishing in Texas, um, out in a kayak sitting on lovely open water, beautiful evening, sun's out, got a few little fish. Um, don't be scared to come out to these rivers and take your kayak, take your boat. Um, I know they're pretty shallow, but as long as you're safe and smart about it, it's really easy to navigate around. Um, hi to the hug that shoreline that has that steep bank on it and you should be just fine um, having a depth finder makes your life a lot easier but if you don't just look at the shoreline and it'll tell you everything you need to know um as you can see there's a few fish piled into these deep holes um i'm not fishing in the bottom of the hole I'm sitting on that flat edge on the edge as i explained before um the most active fish are going to be the ones that are a little bit shallower um i netted a bunch of bait fish right underneath where i'm sitting so there's plenty of food for the fish to go for the fish to feed around here um, definitely great action. Find that nice day, get out there, catch some catfish. Normally I catch three or four pounders so I can get a meal out of it, but unfortunately today just wasn't in the cards. But I really appreciate you watching. If you have any questions, drop them down below. Uh, hit subscribe, hit that like button. Really appreciate it.